Welcome, dear viewers. Welcome to the session on digital literacy and technology enabled learning in context of NEP. As we all know, post COVID, technology has taken a major role in education sector. So far, we were thinking that it will take us another 10 years to reach where we are today in the post pandemic scenario. In such a situation, it has become really important for us to understand why it is important to promote and be digitally literate and also understand how we can do the teaching learning transactions with the help of technology, which not only makes our lives easier, but it also makes it more important and more easy to transact the entire concept that you're wanting the learner to learn. And specifically in context of the new education policy 2020, which the government has been stressing so much upon, we need to understand how technology can be imbibed in the teaching learning processes and how it can play a very important, versatile, dynamic role in these transactions. All of us are in the business of education. So we need to know and understand how we can create the best products and technology is an aid for that. So welcome to all of you to this session of digital literacy and technology enabled learning in context of NEP. With me today is Professor K.S. Arul Selvan, the Director of School of Journalism and New Media Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University. And he will now tell you how NEP wants to imbibe digital literacy in all the disciplines and all the areas of studies, be they humanities or social sciences, engineering and various other allied fields. Over to Professor Selvan. Thank you, Dr. Shikha. Technology become a prominent factor in the last 20 years, but we realized the more importance of the technology in our daily life during the last two years, the corona time. Because of uh, our daily life got disrupted, we relied heavily on technology. The two aspect of new uh, national education policy highlights the importance of technology part. Technology enable learning at the same time promoting digital literacy. These two are very important fundamental components when we are transacting the learning, teaching learning process through communication system. When we are in a distance mode, when we are in a lifelong mode, when we are in an online mode, all our teaching learning process being used, transacted through computers, through camera, through microphone, through laptop and LMS like that. Various media components are involved in this technology enabled learning. We need to understand how to handle the media, particularly technology enabled media platform. So that's the focus of this presentation within the context of the recommendation of national education policy. We have two major uh, points we are going to discuss in the presentation followed by this uh, question and answer session. One is technology enabled learning. What are the intricacies and other dimensions? Secondly, media and information literacy and teaching learning process. What is the, the correlation between these two processes in order to enhance the better pedagogical process through distance learning or transaction based teaching learning process. Now I request Dr. Shika to talk more about technology enabled learning process. Thank you sir. I am Dr. Shikha Rai, Associate Professor with the School of Journalism and New Media Studies and as of now I will be talking on the technology enabled learning. First and foremost we need to understand what is this technology enabled learning. Whenever we are using digital content through some technologies, through some platform, through some systems and we are helping in conducting the student learning, keeping her learning pedagogy in mind in order to enhance her learning experience, that is what is known as TEL or technology enabled learning. Now this as we all know is the age of digital learners. So these are the people who are digitally very sound. They are very proficient with the use of technology. They all have smartphones. Now we need to develop the multiple senses which are involved in learning because there are different kinds of learning styles that different learners have. We also need to make our learning student centric. And the TEL environment, the learning environment has to be so designed, keeping the pedagogy in mind. 
Now let us try and first look at what are the basics of enhancing the teaching learning processes. The first and foremost thing is that the TEL, Technology Enabled Learning, it creates a culture of robust technology environment and it leads to development of teaching, learning and assessment. So these are the three major pillars in the teaching learning transactions. All of them are positively affected by use of technology. Students are actively engaged with learning objects. More the student engagement, the better the satisfaction and more the retention amongst the learners. Also, as we all know that there are various learner styles that different learners have. These, uh, the technology component, it helps in serving the unique needs of students. So these needs can be met by using differentiated pathways for differentiated instructions. So say for example, somebody is good with the auditory part of it. So they will be able to grasp things better if they are listening to it through a podcast. On the other hand, there are others who would be find the audiovisual component more bearable or they will be able to retain more of the audiovisual component. So these are the different learning styles that learners have. Technology helps us give the component, give the concept to different learners according to their learning styles. Then there is instructional design versus the learner design. Earlier we used to be talking in the field of education about instructional design. So it was more of a top down approach whereby the teacher used to say what are the things that you must do in order to learn certain components. But with TEL it has become more of a learner centric design. And this is more evidence based activity design. Say for example it makes use of certain tasks, certain tools, certain activity patterns which can help us as teachers assess how is the learning taking place and what is the best decision in, in the interest of the learner. The parallel design of activity and technology provides the best outcome. Then it also focuses on the goals of NEP. We all understand as teachers how important NEP is in today's times. So it helps in cre uh, pr producing creative learning, collaborative working. It helps in the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary approach, which is the focus of NEP. It also helps with the intercultural communication and problem solving. So this kind of technology enabled learning is self-paced, self-directed, and it is a kind of learning which takes place anytime, anywhere. Also, as teachers, you need to know what is in it for you. How is it helpful to you? Is it only about increasing your burden of producing videos and audios and podcasts and writing blogs? No. With the new generation of learners, teachers need the newest skills. So you are no more the sage who is talking to the people and you are no more the mentor on the side. You are today the co-constructor of learning. So if you can develop skills and change your teaching pedagogy, you can motivate your students, you can take advantage of your learner's potential, you can lessen your burden by teaching them how to search, how to validate and how to synthesize information. Moreover, you can also communicate and collaborate and teach them to do that as well. So it definitely takes off chunks of burden off your shoulders and at the same time produces great results. Now let us look at the uh, overall benefits of technology enabled learning. More in terms of the institution, more in terms of the teachers as well as the learners. One, like I just said, it is anytime, anywhere education. Two, it provides better access to the student. So it is not like you've missed the lecture because you were unwell. You can go back and look at the video later on in the day. It is more cost saving. It is more learner focused. It is measurable. With the help of big data and all other tools that helps the big data perform its tasks, you are able to measure the kind of learning, the amount of learning that is exactly taking place in different sections of your learners. Then of course it helps us get better learning outcomes and it has a faster response time. You are able to get as teachers a feedback in a shorter, uh, shorter amount of time. And then there is a better use of experts. So if I want to listen to a professor in Michigan, it is very easy that asynchronously I either look at the video which has been managed for me by my institution or I am able to uh, asynchronously uh, ask my questions to which answers would be given later by the expert. So we are able to make use of global experts. 
then uh, focusing on what exactly is needed for you you could be teachers in schools you could be teachers in colleges or in universities so how do you use technology in classroom in order to enhance learning what all can you do so these are just some of the ideas you may have your own and many others one is one can create digital content this could be in the form of blogs in the form of podcasts ebooks videos flyers and so many other digital art and one can also encourage creative expressions from students also one can integrate videos and multimedia in lessons and presentations it helps you give a break from the you know probably the boredom that comes in once a lecture starts and it also while giving a break it also helps you turn the attention of the learner to that particular component which could be a video or a multimedia presentation then you use a shared online classroom calendar for helping them remember their due dates or for guest lectures or other activities whatever is in your lesson plan also there are digital field trips so say for example google street view this is just one of the apps there are various other apps through which you can look at say for example forests or parks or historical monuments a learner can actually be there virtually and look at the uh, sophistication of what you're trying to teach also there is gamified learning everywhere games are not just in the form of video games which are used for entertainment education by and large is making a huge uh, amount of use of it so say for example you pick uh you show a virtual place a virtual garden and you ask a school goer a class 6 child to pick all the vegetables whose stem is eaten so as a virtual avatar the student goes picks those vegetables only whose stem are eaten so also there are online activities and this is for those who have finished their tasks early there are always students in the class who finish earlier than the rest what do you do with them you introduce some concept based games and online activities for them another thing that one can do is integrate social media the youngsters are very frequently on their social media handles be it instagram be it facebook or uh, you know twitter whichever else so facebook groups can be used for posting discussion topics and twitter can be used for asking questions there can be multiple other things that you know and multiple other social media platforms that may be made use of in order to transact teaching uh, concepts and then of course getting student feedback now this can be anonymous it can be in the form of polls it can be in the form of online surveys so what's working and what's not working with the class it will be evident to the teacher there and then also problems and confusions can be sorted out so these are the ways how we can use technology in classroom to enhance learning so finally i'd like to say that the watchword remains digital literacy it is very important not only for the learners but also for the educators we cannot afford to fall behind so for learners it will help in you know uh, procuring online resources and making tasks simpler it can also help in effective content searches and then it can help in proper citations so a student has to learn if he has taken some concept from somewhere borrowed something from somewhere how do you attribute it properly to the right source and how important it is then there is a greater respect for others opinions and ideas because this is the time of collaboration when you're working with technology you're collaborating with different people on different ends and for different uh, purposes so it helps you gain that intercultural perspective whereby you can respect others opinions and ideas also uh it is important for educators why because it enhances student engagement which is very important for you as a teacher it improves academic performance which is what you're basically looking at after all the hard work of teaching that you put in and then it creates more opportunities for better collaboration not only with you as an educator but also for the children also for the learners it prepares the learners for the job market because it gives them some hands on experience on the softwares that are to be used or the ta tasks that have to be transacted once they are into a job then it also applies the most uh, prevalent thing the most important thing of the technology enabled learning it is 
that it applies to most disciplines and subject areas. So it is not that only people who belong to the science background or people who are only uh, limited to humanities will be able to transact it. Everybody across the platforms uh, are able to make use of digital literacy in their teaching learning transactions. So the idea is be digitally literate and progress with the times. Now I hand over to Professor Selvan, who will talk more about how digital literacy and NEP are connected and how media and information literacy plays a great role in the education sector today. Over to sir. Every one of us might have uh, uh, familiar with the term literacy. And uh, Shika was talking about technology enabled learning can be become more effective if you are a digitally literate. So literacy, media literacy, digital literacy, there are so many literacy attached with the communication field. What exactly uh, that uh, the, the relationship between literacy and media communication? So that we are going to uh, discuss in a couple of next slides. In the last uh, couple of decades, our life is being highly occupied with media and the communication gadgets whether in a normal life or office life or a teaching learning context. So that is the, uh, the influence of technology. Shika was talking about technology enabled learning, Google uh, Street View, ebooks or Facebook Live or uh, blogs and everything. Teacher can use it, student also can use it. Now with the advent of mobile and the reach of handset, both the teacher and the student are having a better media environment. So we need to utilize this technology and media environment for better teaching learning process. Teacher can't uh, make it like uh, teacher centric classroom settings and student can't rely only on teacher. And now with the advan advent of enormous technological based knowledge distribution system, the teacher can facilitate the knowledge distribution Along with the classroom, students are having a gadgets, computers are available either through institution or through personal capacity. They need to integrate, but how do we integrate? In integration means all these communication gadgets, not don't treat them as a technological gadgets, but treat them as a communication platform. Here, whether it's in a classroom settings or distance mode or online mode, we are using a video, we are using audio. I am not using the word mobile or computer. Remember that there is a lot of difference between the YouTube or gadgets and audio and video. We have to use a text, we have to use the graphics, we need to use audio and video. This is a one uh, aspect of communication. Media information literacy or digital literacy talks about three dimensions. One, we need to know how to access the right information. Fact needs to be presented or retrieved in a proper manner means from the reliable sources that we need to, need to have our skills and competency. This is the one level. Second level, even after consuming or retrieving that information, we should be able to comprehend that information in a proper manner. Comprehension, cognitive capacity to understand the message. That's the second dimension of media literacy. The third dimension is Unlike the 30 to 40 years back, we used to receive the information from the newspapers and television channels. Somebody produces the content, broadcast from some city, we receive it through the television set or through newspapers. But currently it's not like that. Your student can stream the, uh, the, a topic through YouTube. You can share the Facebook Live. So like that, everyone can participate in the communication. We need to know what are the requirements, what are the skill sets to become more effective through television, through audio, video, putting a text and graphics, pictures, combination of all the elements in order to achieve the stated goal. So these are the primary requirements. In order to get the benefit of technology enabled learning or to become a digitally literate, that's what NEP is strongly recommending. We need to understand the consequences of the presence and utilization of various media elements. That's called media information literacy. And media information literacy can be a more uh, effective tool for teaching learning process, provided it can be in combined with the active learning strategies. T 
teacher and student needs to understand the the nuances of media and communication then integrate with your learning activities learning strategies so that makes the the acceleration of teaching learning process in multifold rather than one teacher or a couple of teachers transacting the knowledge now see that the entire day you are taking class you are giving assignments assignments they have to retrieve the data from multiple sources they have to retrieve the data from actual factual level so that is a fundamental component of media literacy the use of media that enhance the teaching and learning and it complements the traditional approach to learning so that is the biggest advantage and uh, the availability of communication tool and that to particular technology enabled communication tool is affordable and uh, luckily in a global context india is the only country of, uh, provides the internet access in a cheapest manner data access is more economical in indian context compared to other countries and availability of mobile handset internet penetration may be around 60 63% but mobile penetration is close to 93% that's 2022 data mobile with a uh, economical data access many of the students and teachers can access enormous level of data so that is uh, the the context current in which we are currently we are living and the corona period uh, gave a opportunity for us to understand the significance of technology enabled learning and uh, the uh, the using the media and communication tool in the teaching process that enhance the students and uh, uh, they it it helps them to retain the knowledge and it motivates interest remember that and younger people younger younger youngsters they prefer to learn more get attached with the uh, audio video moving text moving pictures illustration and all that helps them to retain the knowledge so there is a one advantage with that but they need to know that how to utilize those uh, tools for uh, learning by the teachers as well as by the students and uh, uh, it has its own limitations text can play a role and uh, graphics has its own role and in the within the graphics color has, each color it has its own meaning and uh, certain meaning it enhances the, the the learning environment it uh, smoothens the uh, the tension and it facilitate the uh, easy transaction of knowledge which may not it might take couple of paragraph to explain a very complex idea but with a simple graphics one can explain that no need to create that graphics also sometime if not possible and there are a lot of common uh, creative commons this is a new concept where the materials are available without much copyright restrictions and uh, attributions then there are ways in which we can utilize that without any uh, uh, payment or uh, issues of copyright stringent rules and regulations this is an advantage either we can create which uh, the technology affordable technology helps us for the assignments projects classroom teaching and everything or we can adopt the existing resources through the through the internet or online resources of that there are number of uh, uh, consideration that before they need to integrate the media one such uh, requirement whether uh, it's in a classroom settings or in a distance mode or online mode the students should uh, uh, have a knowledge about how to use the media the plat- platform teachers are using this system and they are know what is the uh, right ma- information or the wrong information but that same knowledge capacity may not be available with the students and here uh, in a new education policy they are mentioning about technology enabled learning there is a need to integrate media information literacy in the curriculum it can be a stand alone course as a media literacy and that helps the students to handle the media and information in a better manner this is one aspect the second aspect is utilizing the media information literacy within the curriculum how effectively we can transact the biological uh, knowledge through uh, various media tools or mathematics or social science or economics the various knowledge uh, uh, subject can be transacted one is a basic knowledge about media second utilizing the media for better teaching learning process in a specific subject these two are very high priority and the coming days and computers mobile gadgets we're going to be part and parcel of life 
including the youngster, youngsters, and they need to know the, the positive and negative aspect of the media. Since it's a, a various online tools is available, students need to be focused from where they can be diverted. You know a lot of negative aspect of the technology that easily can be uh, a lot of hate, hate campaign or hacking or crime, cyber crime, many things are happening there. Students need to know about other the negative aspect of the media and concentrate on the platform for better benefit for their teaching learning process. So fundamentally, students need to know the intricacies of media and the information system. That's a fundamental requirement. And they need to understand how they can utilize those resources for their school or college assignments preparation of uh, materials and preparation for exam. And uh, media literacy can help the people decide and uh, uh, it may not be possible to get the, all the required knowledge from one or two, a couple of teachers. And there will be always a knowledge gap during the learning process. Media and communication system can play a role to fill the gap. But we need to effectively utilize those uh, system to fill the gap and it can complement with the teaching learning process of the school or college in order to enhance the, the cognitive and knowledge capacity of the students. That's a benefit and overall media information it is talking about empowerment of the individual. Empowerment, empowerment means having better knowledge, better information, one can take a better decisions. So that's the ultimate goal of media information literacy. And a teacher and a students should be able to utilize it for their own individual empowerment for the larger, better goal. And if we empower the individuals and automatically, the social, collectively, the society gets empowered. This is what we have witnessed in many developed countries and then long historical evidence are existing about educational intervention regarding empowering individuals with regard to media and information last 30 40 years we have a historical record for the complementing role of media for betterment of individuals so that is a, a fundamental requirement particularly the students level youngsters needs to be trained enough to handle the media and communication tool then only we can get the actual benefit from the technology enabled learning that's being introduced in the, the first part of the meeting. And uh, once the uh, students are trained enough in the media and information system, these are the benefits. If you look at the screen, you can understand that they can be able to access the broad range of tools with a flexible technical skill and not necessarily confined to the classroom or library. They have uh, sky is the limit for them to learn, get the information and they can critically analyze any information because the media information literacy teaches them about how to handle the text or video audio because every communication tools coming in the public domain comes with a certain hidden agenda they need to understand that they have to filter out the information because they can't uh, if they allow those information with agenda it will spoil their attitudes knowledge opinion so a lot of consequences are there so students, if they are able, if they are literate, media literate or digital literate, they sh they will be able to critically analyze the incoming information, and equally they will be able to produce the content, and uh, not necessarily to produce content in a textual format. They can produce it in multiple media elements, and uh, they have better uh, uh, skills of collecting the knowledge and sharing the knowledge with a peer group, and they will be very responsible and they are responsible in terms of expressing their opinions, views within the classroom, within the school, within the family, outside the uh, schools and college and family system. This is the more important part during this misinformation and disinformation process that's being uh, accelerated with the, with the advent of social media platforms. So this, is, this will help them to protect this kind of hate campaign or misinformation or disinformation thing. And uh, uh, there's, there are a lot of ways in which the uh, media uh, can be utilized. The, if, the slide shows about uh, how the student-centric media uh, uh, activities helps them to learn the better knowledge system and how lecture uh, faculty members and 
utilize the media and the information tools for the for the delivery of knowledge part and there are various ways in which the media can play a role it what are the advantages it it, it's, uh, it helps them to showcasing the complex ideas and it uh, it, uh, it it helps them to assess their own capability and uh, certain theoretical concept may not be able to explain in a short point of time so that can be complemented with the various audio video contents and uh, the similar benefit for the students in terms of media and audio video content always retain the better uh, interest this is one advantage it helps them to uh, enhance their analytical skills and they'll able to utilize those tools to introspect the concepts and theory in multiple perspectives so this is one advantage and they can access the resources across the globe and uh, this is the uh, benefit of of utilizing media and information system what are the ways in which the current uh, scenario can be improved this is what uh, national education policy is expecting that one uh, the uh, there, there can be a media and information literacy as a kind of educational intervention in the school curriculum level as of now there is a course cu curriculum that talks about only understanding the text understanding the text is one aspect of media literacy but the media literacy talks about other two one how to access the right information how to participate in the communication so media information literacy needs to be introduced in a holistic manner in a, a different levels the school and colleges this is one of the uh, recommendation may be taken forward because this is what witnessed in many developed countries and uh, secondly the teacher and faculty needs to be trained on the subject of media and information handling system and it's not necessarily utilizing the digital literacy how to use a computer or how to use the powerpoint but rather than the, the meaning and syntax and uh, various uh, uh, knowledge associated with the different elements of media that needs to be introduced and media information literacy can be facilitated through lifelong uh, uh, teaching learning process whether students or teachers beyond the school and curriculum they can uh, get the uh, information about the media through uh, through the open system open learning system or through informal or non formal learning system these are the potential way in which we can popularize the media literacy and that indirectly helps the school and uh, teaching learning process do that and now uh, we'll go for a question and answer section about uh, the topic of this session technology enabled learning digital literacy and media information literacy for better effective teaching learning process shika right thank you very much sir